So I'm going to start today's video with the story. Literally a decade ago, 2014, Tesla, led by Elon Musk, set the incredibly ambitious goal of producing 500,000 electric vehicles per year in 2020, building out battery production capacity in the United States to meet that goal. What followed was an endless parade of ridicule, laughter and mockery from so-called experts, analysts, investors, the finance media. That'll never happen. That's ridiculous. Blah, 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 blah. My all-time favorite, of course, an article with the headline, Why Projections for Tesla to Sell 500,000 Electric Vehicles in 2020 Are Absurd. Of course, they did in fact meet that goal, despite the scamdemic. Why this quick trip down memory lane? Well, Elon Musk has a prediction about what appears to be an absurdly large number of future products, many of which will be produced by Tesla. Let's hear what he's got to say. Um, so basic infrastructure for every nation, like they have an electrical grid. Yeah, it'll be something like electricity or, you know, uh, just or, or, you know, having an airline or something like that. It's every every country will have uh, AIs or multiple AIs. So um, and there will be a lot of robots. There'll be a lot of robots. Like, uh, uh, but we had way more robots than people. Yeah, let's have that conversation a second because people are concerned about, uh, as you said, dwindling populations. AI and, and robots have potential to help support the GDP. Um, yes. Congratulations on Optimus 2 and soon Optimus 3. Uh, your prediction on the number of robots by 2040, humanoid robots to be specific, what order of magnitude? By 2040? Yeah. So. Um, I think by, 20, if you say like 2040, probably there are more humanoid robots than there are people. So on the so order of 10 I'd billion. Say, yeah. Yes. I can see the headlines now. Why projections for 10 billion humanoid robots in 2040 are absurd and, in fairness, it is kind of absurd. You know what else is absurd? Just a hypothetical, of course. Launching a rocket by the name of Starship into orbit and then catching the booster on the launch tower on the very first attempt, that's also absurd. And it also happened. Importantly, this isn't just an off-the-cuff guess from Musk. There's some thought behind it. Now, does it mean that this will happen? No, but play along at home. Let's engage in this thought exercise together. Say in 2040, there are, in fact, 10-ish billion humanoid robots on Earth. First question we might want to ask as Tesla investors is, what percent of those robots were manufactured and sold by Tesla? If I had to guess, I'd probably say it's multiple double-digit percentages, but let's be extremely conservative and use a nice round and easy number. Just 10%, that's 1 billion humanoid robots. How much potential revenue on the sale of 1 billion humanoid robots plus a monthly software subscription across that fleet of 1 billion humanoid robots to be able to perform tasks. Are we talking here? And your price point on these humanoid robots? You're, you're pretty good on pricing. I, 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 Some, sometimes you're off I, on I, timing. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm often optimistic on timing, but um, although, you know, the press will report when I'm late, but not when I'm early. Um, you know, for example, our Shanghai factory, uh, we thought it would take about a year and a half, and we did it in 11 months. Um, our Giga Nevada factory, we thought two years, we did it in 18 months. Um, or the Colossus you know, cl cluster. Texas, yeah. Texas factory, two years, we did it in 14 months. So I, I, I've been early actually many times, it's just that it's just not reported. Um, so when I, when I make a prediction, I, I try to figure out, I try to say, what, what is the 50th percentile likely? Which means that half the time I should be wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm not sandbagging essentially. Um, um, so, but, but, but I, I think it's, once you get out of 2040, that's a long time from now, um, going 25 years, there'll be at least 10 billion humanoid robots. Um, and price, price uh, point? Class, yeah, the price point will be, I think, quite low. Um, probably twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for a robot that could do anything. So let's forget the timing for a moment. 10, 15, 20, 30 years, who cares, whatever. Just focus on the actual numbers that have been thrown out there. At some point, likely to be 10 billion plus humanoid robots on Earth. Must believe that long term at scale, these things just call it $20,000. Let's be conservative. Back to that hypothetical 10% share, 1 billion humanoid robots at $20,000 a pop. The math's pretty simple on this. We'd end up with $20 trillion in revenue, assuming each of these robots is sold for $20,000. But what if, as I suspect, strongly suspect, there's also a software subscription per month? After all, it's the software that allows the hardware to do what is going to be indistinguishable from magic. If you guys are curious, today Tesla charges a software subscription for the FSD software, right? In the interest of keeping things nice and simple, we're just going to assume a little under $1,000 per month. It's not that much. If this robot can essentially add more value than a minimum wage, even a moderate wage earner, but the actual cost is a fraction of that, it'll be an absolute no-brainer. So now we've got to multiply that fleet of 1 billion humanoid robots 
by $10,000 per year of software revenue, almost pure profit. Again, the numbers are very easy. We're now talking $10 trillion of almost entirely profit from the software operating that fleet of robots per year. Now, I know these numbers are sounding super ridiculous, absurd, I might even say, but let's continue this thought exercise. And for contrast, today in the United States, a typical automotive industry worker costs a company over $100,000 a year. So the example I've given, assume that these robots can provide as much useful labor, keeping in mind they could work roughly three times as much per week. So even if they're one third the speed, they can work three times as much, they're on par, and ultimately they'll be actually much more efficient and capable. And I've just talked about a potential cost to operate of $10,000 per year versus over 100,000. I mean, they've got to be no brainers at that price point. If a company has a business doing $10 trillion a year in profits, almost entirely profit, by the way, on software, operating a fleet of existing robots and continuing to produce more products who continue to increase the amount of value they can add every year, what kind of multiple would you put on that $10 trillion of profit? Let's just say we pluck out, let's just call it a 30 times the multiple, very conservative. We're talking at about a $30 trillion valuation just on the robot business. And it sounds crazy just to say that out loud, but I've walked through the exercise here. A 10% share of 10 trillion humanoid robots, each sold for 20 grand. Forget that. We didn't even count that. Forget that. Forget that $20 trillion of hardware sales. Forget it. I'm just talking about the software to operate that fleet of 1 billion robots. Less than $1,000 a month. $10,000 a year times a billion robots. $10 trillion of profits. Put a multiple on that. The conservative multiple, 30 times, about $30 trillion. Again, the skeptics will say that will never happen. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. My question is, what if it does? Or more importantly, where does it stop? You think a ratio of roughly one to one humanoid robots to humans is where it ends? If increasingly capable, increasingly intelligent humanoid robots can add more and more value to people's lives, become more productive as a consumer, as a person, who wouldn't want at least one, two, three, or four of these things in the home? Housekeeper, nanny, cook, cleaner, babysitter, gardener, landscaper, honey, I'm too tired. Uh, uh, what? Um, never mind their use in commerce, in business. Musk hasn't been joking when he's talked about being unsure if there's really an upper limit to the size of the global economy. Over a long enough time frame, there could be 20 billion, 30, 50, 100 billion plus humanoid robots on Earth. Um, we will be in a future, in, 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 assuming we are on the good path of AI, I think we will be in a future of abundance. You know, obviously you wrote a book called Abundance. <laughs> so I think... By the way, great book, highly recommended. I think it's roughly a decade now, in fact... I'm pretty certain it came out in 2014, maybe 15. Still extremely relevant and highly recommended. Peter is awesome. The book is great. You would agree that that is probably the outcome. Um, that that uh, it, basically anyone will, anyone will be able to have any goods and services they want. The, the actual marginal cost of goods and services will be extremely low in the future. Let me, so, in yeah. our last four minutes, let me change the subject to something near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh, congratulations on, on Starship. Uh, it was Literally awesome, uh, probably the Thank engineering you. feat of this decade, if not more. Not bad for humans. Not bad for humans. You know, we, did, we did that with no AI was involved in that whatsoever. So um, I'm, I'm glad to say that we all did that entirely with human brains and without uh, AI. I think in the future, the AI might look at that and say, not bad for a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> when are we on Mars? And just to be clear, Musk is not joking here. His point in the future, and this ties back into Tesla's humanoid robots, AI will eventually match human capabilities, intelligence, thought, cognition, creativity, then exceed, then far exceed to the point where an AI in the future, artificial superintelligence with vastly superior intellect, creativity, then all humanity combined times a million might look back at what was achieved with the SpaceX booster catch first attempt on the launch tower and go, hey, it's not bad for a bunch of monkeys. He's not joking. And why does this matter? Optimus is the vessel it will contain this increasingly capable AI over time. I think it's very hard for a lot of people to imagine what it's like for Tesla to put a piece of hardware into the world, a humanoid robot, that with software becomes increasingly capable and intelligent over time. But that's what's going to happen. We're in this strange sort of in-between phase today with AI, where at certain tasks, AI already utterly superhuman. We can go back a couple of decades, just about almost literally 20 years, where a fairly basic AI whip the world's best chess players ass. Today, we have AIs in the top probably 5% of visual artists, large language models now, crushing it with language. But there's still many tasks that AIs are far below human capability. But the trend is inevitably clear. Over time, artificial intelligence, which already vastly exceeds humans on a lot of tasks, 
matches humans on all tasks and exceeds humans and then continues to pull further and further ahead. Just look what humanity's done over the last few hundred years by standing on the shoulders of giants. Look what's happened with technology, computers, communication, access to information. This trend is set to continue and only accelerate. If there's one thing you take away from today's video, it's this. If your time horizon when looking at Tesla from an investor's point of view does not span multiple decades, you are doing it wrong. I understand not everyone watching is going to be alive a few decades from now, although pro tip, do everything you can possibly to stay alive. Might even reach longevity escape velocity. And I do mean that, look after your health. But I think one of the big mistakes a lot of investors make is having far too short a time horizon, not looking far enough out into the future. Or worse, focusing on when something may happen as opposed to if it will happen. It's inevitable to me. Tesla will sell a lot of humanoid robots that will become increasingly intelligent and capable, therefore valuable over time. We heard Peter ask about 2040. I think Musk was talking about 25 years from now. That's the whole point. Who knows if it's a decade and a half, two and a half decades, whatever. Is it going to happen? Yes. Great. Then who cares about the timing? And I actually mean that. Who cares about the timing? The real question is what happens eventually? And eventually, I believe that Tesla will have carved out a massive slice of a global humanoid robot market. An opportunity that we discussed previously and did some really rough back of the napkin math on. Got ourselves to a valuation for the company, a very conservative valuation of around $30 trillion just on the robot business. By the way, I look forward to revisiting this video about 30 years from now and seeing how things played out. P.S. I'm not joking. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.